I started off by $150 and $200 an hour. These days, I charge $18,000. In today's tutorial, we're diving into how to create visuals inspired by Iman's editing style. Those clean, high-quality shots that instantly make a video feel professional. We'll start by designing a high-quality background with animated graphs. Something simple but visually powerful. Then, I'll show you how to add smooth, cinematic camera movement. Everything we'll do today is designed to elevate your motion design. From the way the animation flows, to how the camera reacts, to those subtle finishing touches that make everything feel polished and intentional. So, let's get started on our animation. Let's start by making a background. For that, take a solid and name it BG. Apply a four-color gradient to it. Change all the colors to black. Change the first color to a deep red and the fourth color to a darker red. Adjust the position of both color points and set the blend value to 150. Next, add a new shape layer and using the ellipse tool, create a circle. Change the fill to radial gradient. Set the white color to red and move the black color stop to the left. Drag its handle to expand the black color and move it downward. Change the stroke to none and place the circle at the bottom. Set its size to 75 and rename it Circle 1. Duplicate it by pressing Ctrl plus D and place it on the left side. Go into Content, select Ellipse 1 and adjust the color position so that the black is in the middle and the red is visible on the side. Change its scale to 110. Once again, duplicate it with Ctrl plus D and place the third circle on the top. Adjust the gradient colors for it as well. Change its scale to 80 and fine tune its position. Duplicate circle 3 and place it on the right side. Make it slightly bigger and adjust the gradient colors. Adjust its position Now, search for Gaussian Blur, then drag and drop it onto Circle 1. Change the blurriness to 15. Copy the Gaussian Blur using Ctrl plus C and paste it onto the other circles. Finally, select all these circles and make a pre-comp of them. Name it Circles. Now that our background is done, take the Pen tool and make a straight line. Change its fill to None and set the stroke to Solid Color. Apply a gradient ramp to it from the Effects and Presets panel. Change the black color to a dark red, then place the start of the ramp point at the top of the line and the end of the ramp color at the bottom of the line. I'm renaming it as Graph Line 1. Place its anchor point in the center by pressing Ctrl plus Alt plus Home. Duplicate the line and rotate it 90 degrees. Drag it down and make the white end meet adjust the start and end points of the ramp. I want to increase the size of line 2. So go into Content and Shape 1, and selecting Path 1, select the right side of the line. Drag it to the right while holding Shift so it stays straight. Next, take a new solid and name it Grid. Apply the grid effect to it. Change its corner size Decrease the opacity to around 20 Set the border to 4 And change the grid color to dark gray Right-click on the layer and make a pre-comp of it Make sure Move All Attributes into the comp is selected Now, using the Rectangle tool, make a mask on the grid comp Go into the Mask Properties Increase the mask feather, I'm increasing it to around 500, and change the mask expansion to negative 200. 
I think the mask feather is too much, so I'm decreasing it to 400. Now let's add some text. Using the text tool, type hourly rates, change the font to Babysnoy, and set the size to 110. Place it at the top, and apply a gradient ramp to it as well. Change the black color to a grayish red, and adjust the ramp's start and end positions so that red is on the bottom and white is on the top. Duplicate the text layer and place it on the bottom left side, where the graph lines meet. Change the text to 2017 and adjust the ramp's start and end positions. Make it smaller around 65%. Duplicate the text layer and while holding shift, bring it to the right side. Change the text to 2025 and adjust its ramp's start and end positions as well. Now, using the rectangle tool, Make a rectangle. Change the stroke to none and set its fill to linear gradient. Make the black color's opacity zero and move the red color handle to the left to expand the red color. Rename the layer to bar one. Duplicate it by pressing Ctrl plus D. Apply the light sweep effect to the duplicated layer. Change, add to cut out and set the light color to red. Make the sweep intensity zero. Move the anchor point from the center to the lower line of the bar. Change the angle to 107, increase the edge intensity to 92, decrease the edge thickness to three, and set the width to 51. I'm also changing the angle to 167. Add deep glow to it as well. Enable tint, keep the color as red, decrease the exposure to 0.5, and increase the radius. Parent bar 2 to bar 1. Open bar 1's scale by pressing S. Uncheck Constrain Proportions. Add a keyframe at 0 seconds and another one at 2 seconds. Bring the anchor point to the left side of the bar and change the width of the bar to 0. Select both the keyframes and press F9 to easy ease them. Right click, go into keyframe velocity and change the end influence to 75 and the start influence to 65. And check the box for continuous. Add a new text layer above bar 1 and change the text to $150 to $200. Set the text size to 70. I'm adjusting the position of our light sweep a bit, so it sits above 150. Adjust the text's gradient ramp position as well. I'm placing both bars at one second and the text layer at one and a half seconds. Press T to open the text's opacity. Add a keyframe at the start of the layer, then move 10 frames ahead by pressing Ctrl plus Shift plus right arrow. Add a keyframe, set the first keyframe's opacity to zero, and press F9 to easy ease the keyframes. Now select all the layers from graph line to the 2025 text layer and make a pre-comp of them. Open the comp's opacity, add a keyframe at 0 seconds, and another one at 1 second. Change the first keyframe's opacity to 0 and easy ease the keyframes. Finally, take the pen tool and make a curved line. Turn off the fill, turn on the stroke, change the stroke color to red, and set the stroke weight to 5. I'm renaming it as Curved Line. Go into the layer's content, Shape 1, Stroke 1, and change the butt cap to Rounded Cap. Add a trim path to it. Place the layer at 1.5 seconds. Set the end property of the layer to 0. Add a keyframe at the start of the layer, and another 1, 1 second ahead, 
Then change the end property to 100. Select both keyframes and easy ease them. Now, open the graph editor. We want it to start fast and end slow. So select the second keyframe, move its anchor point to the right, move the second keyframe further to the right, then change its outgoing keyframe velocity to 75 and check the box for continuous. Add deep glow to it. Enable its tint and reduce its exposure to 0.5. Now, duplicate the bar and text layer and place them on top of the curved line. I'm making a pre-comp of them and bringing that pre-comp to the top. Inside the comp, change the text and move it to the right. Select the path of the curved line and adjust its position so it's on the left side of our text. Duplicate the curved line and using the rectangle tool, make a mask around it so only the part inside the rectangle is visible. Add a light sweep effect to it. Change the sweep color to red and set Add to Cut Out. Increase the width and sweep intensity. Place its center point at the top of the line. Change the angle to zero and set both the edge thickness and edge intensity to zero. I'm also changing the color to light red. Cut the bar to comp where our layers start. and place it where most of the curved line animation is done. I'm positioning the bar to comp just before two seconds. Make all the layers 3D except for BG. Add a camera and a null. Make the null 3D and parent the camera to the null. I'm keeping the renderer set to classic 3D. Add a keyframe to the position of the null at 0 seconds and another one at 2 seconds. At the first keyframe, zoom in slightly using the Z position of the null. I'm also making the circles comp 3D. Duplicate the null by pressing Ctrl plus D and delete all the keyframes. Move the second keyframe of null 1 to 2 seconds and 12 frames and add the first keyframe of null 2 at 2 seconds. Move one frame forward by pressing Ctrl plus right arrow. Add another keyframe, parent null 1 to null 2. Zooming in using the Z axis and adjust the position so the focus is on bar 2 and the text layer. Add one more keyframe at 4 seconds and zoom in just a little bit. That's it for this one. I hope you liked this tutorial. Let's see our final product. I started off by $150 and $200 an hour. These days, I charge $18,000.